Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pod and Deliver, John Steinbeck Week. And today we're discussing the book Travels with Charlie in Search of America. How are you doing there, Jacob? I'm doing great. Do you like my background? I think that's the Eiffel Tower. I thought it was kind of oh, pretty. Um, nothing, but, nothing to do with Steinbeck, sorry. No, but um, in a way, think about Charlie. Oh, the yes, he's well, French. Let, let's discuss this book. Oh, yeah, this sorry. book is about our friend, John Steinbeck. We know him. We kind of feel like we know him through literature. But we get to really peer into his life through this book. And um, I, was, I was thinking about why this book is so good. If you don't, haven't read Steinbeck, you'll still like this book. If you read him, I think you'll love it because you get to see his life and what kind of a person he is. What kind of, I don't know, I'm the kind of person who likes to um, know what people eat and drink. I, I like that, those little details. And especially Steinbeck, the man who gave us of mice and men, grapes of wrath. Um, this guy, um, think about, uh, I, I was doing this little experiment in my mind. Imagine if Stephen King decided to get in his, you know, trailer or get into some kind of big, you know, RV, <laughs> travel, travel the, 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 the country and stop by diners and talk to people. I imagine it's something similar to what Steinbeck did here. And, and think of this guy, Steinbeck, who's the intellectual, oh. Nobel Prize winner, who didn't think the people of the US were beneath him. When I say people of the US, I mean not his intellectual, at his intellectual level. Right. He didn't think people were beneath him to go to these diners and go to um, uh, Yellowstone Park he wanted and to do that, right? I mean, he desired it. He wanted to know America and Americans. I say this because there is a, I, there are some intellectuals out there who wouldn't, who wouldn't lower themselves and, and rub shoulders with those people. And um, uh, on, that, on that level, it's, it's very, very good. There's a couple of uh, excerpts I, I would want to read a little bit later, but sure. it is a pleasure to travel with Charlie and Steinbeck. Charlie is the dog, a poodle, um, a real character in its own right, this right. dog. And <laughs> you, you kind of want to meet Charlie. It's hard to describe. I know it's a dog. It's a poodle. And before this book, I didn't even like, I love dogs, don't like poodles. Now I, can't, I think I like poodles. Yeah, what do you think of the book? I loved it. Second time I, I went through it. First time, I want to say it was right out of college. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I think I was just a time where I was just into Steinbeck. I was reading everything. Um, and so of his, of his works. And I remember just thinking, this was fun back then. And today I read it with a different lens. Like you shared, Ruben. I mean, I, I forgot that he even named his camper. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it, Rossinati, uh, based on the uh, horse from Don Quixote, right? And uh, he, and it's somebody, one of his friends told him, when you go on this trip across the country, um, people are going to stop because of that trailer, and people are going to stop you because you're John Steinbeck. And he said, yeah, nobody did. <laughs> you know? um, and it's like when you said uh, Stephen King, if, if Stephen King went around the country, I think they would recognize him. But I don't know, when you're in a different, he said, when you're in a different circumstance, people just reflect you're a diner. You're, you're a guy who, who's drinking coffee at a diner. And, and, I, and I, I loved it and because he went to places I've been to and then he's been to places I have not been to and I want to go. I looked at the map that he went on, you know, online and I go, oh, I got to hit those places because when you're hearing, it's funny because once he talks about Fargo and, and he shares about it, like no one's ever heard of it, but we have now since the movie. But back then, nobody had heard of Fargo or they had maybe some thoughts of freezing terrain, but he put some warmth into it. But that being said, I love the book. Um, I, there's a couple of pieces um, I, I enjoyed too, Rune. I'll let you go for it first. But yeah, I think if you, like you shared, if you haven't read any Steinbeck, this is a book that and anybody, and, and it's not, a, it's not a, uh, a big book like East of Eden. It's, it's a book that you get through in a couple of days. So there you go. Yeah, he, um, he talks about the... At one point he says, in Spanish, there is a word for which I can't find a counter word in English. It is the verb vacilar, 
present participle vacilando. It does not mean vacillate at all. If one is vacilando, he is going somewhere, but doesn't greatly care whether or not he gets there. And I, I like that because that's the spirit of Steinbeck here. He he's going. He has a destination, but mm. it's more what what happens while he's while he's getting there. Um, there's a, a scene in Wisconsin when he arrives there oh, yeah. where he talks about the cheese. And maybe and I, I know I'm being selfish here because I just said that uh, I'm only going to read one uh, nice. before you shared. But um, that's one of my yes, favorites too. But go ahead. <laughs> um, it was a magical day in Wisconsin. The land dripped with richness, the fat cows and pigs gleaming against green. Mm. I don't know whether or not Wisconsin has a cheese tasting festival, but I, who am a lover of cheese, believes it should. Cheese was everywhere, cheese centers, cheese cooperatives, cheese stores and stands, perhaps even cheese ice cream. And he goes on to express the love of Wisconsin and the description of it was really powerful. Um, I was going to go this past uh, summer. Uh, I was always curious. Now I really, I'm definitely going. Uh, I've never been there. So uh, I always thought, Ruben, it's funny. I always thought that the cheese was just kind of a big, like people just knew that there was cheese there. And because I've seen the cheese heads, you know, in Green Bay. But I said, right. well, I'm, I'm sure that's just kind of just not really. But he's, he went back and said, no, no, no. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Cheese, like you said, cheese ice cream, cheese candy. And so, it made me want to go because that's one of the few, not few places, one of the places he really, really made a big deal. Uh, I think he won another place similar where he just loved was um, Montana, right? He loved Montana for its, I'm sure for its beauty. And he, but he didn't get totally, he didn't become real specific. Although he did say he went to, um, to Yosemite, but, and, and, and his dog acted differently there, uh, Charlie, but, he definitely loved the beauty. I know that because he, he said he just loved it. So there are some places where he said he loved. But my favorite piece, Ruben, was when he went to Vermont. And he says he went to so many churches, like I guess every Sunday, throughout his trips. And there's one pastor in Vermont. He said he just hit it. He Fire and brimstone. And I was thinking, he liked that? But he says he didn't hold back. And he goes, my little sins, my little issues. I always kind of said, oh, there are no big issues. But he, he made me realize, no, those are... <laughs> Those are things you need to work on. Those are things that you need to address. And he goes, I'm glad he was. And he, I shook his hand afterwards. I shook other people's hands because I realized um, he didn't sugarcoat it. He gave it to him. And I'm, and I'm, I should just. It's worth, it it's worth reading directly it is. To, to what he says. And I have mm -hmm. it. I, I, oh, I please I'm gonna share read, it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. So because it, he was very particular in what he, the words he chose were very yes. meaningful and particular. So, um, he spoke, he's, so Steinbeck is talking about, yeah, like you say, a fire and brimstone preacher, and he's not critiquing this preacher. Mm -hmm. He's saying, well, let's, let's see what he says. He spoke of how this preacher as an expert, not the mush, mush hell of these soft days, but a well-stoked, white hot hell mm -hmm. served by technicians of the first order. This reverend brought it to a point where we could understand it. A good hard coal fire, plenty of draft, and a squad of open hearth devils who put their hearts into their work, and their work was me. I began to feel good all over. Talk about a paradox. We were talking about paradox earlier in the week with Ozzy Gomez right. in East of Eden, but it's, it, it, people have a hard time understanding, but men, certainly a Steinbeck, I have to stop here for a moment, want to feel pushed, want the hell and brimstone to get to feel moved, they like that, hmm. and the church today has, is just soft. <laughs> I, I'm going to just say it. I don't mean all churches. I'm not trying to. I don't. I don't want to get. We have friends who are pastors. Sure. I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying you and I know what soft. Some of the churches that are soft. It's not this. What he's describing. For sure. For some years now, God has been a pal to us, practicing togetherness. And that causes the same emptiness a father does playing softball with his son. But this Vermont God cared enough about me to go to a lot of trouble, kicking the hell out of me. Now, let's stop for a moment. Love that. How does this sound familiar to something we just read this week? Oh, geez. I'm, I sound like a teacher. I'm talking to my student. But we just read a book this yeah. week. 
with Adam Steinbeck. and Samuel, right? Samuel, Samuel. Kicking, kicking Adam's butt. Get the hell out of um, Adam. Adam. Mm -hmm. And you need that. Uh, authors like Steinbeck embraced it. And um, listen to this line. I, a little bit later, he says, I felt so revived in spirit that I put $5 in the plate and afterward in front of the ch church shook hands warmly with the minister and as many of the congregation as I could. What, what uh, an indictment in a way to what the church has become. But uh, okay. I don't know. I wanted to share a couple of other things, but I'll, I think that's a good place to... That's a good, that, that was one of my favorite parts too. And oh yeah. I mean, I, I will say this though, as he's coming across the country and he's getting to feel, you could tell that he really enjoys people and, and, and he's doing it. He goes into these diners to talk to, to the locale and you can see that people in Northern, uh, you know, Maine and, and, and um, that part of the country is different than Indiana and, and Illinois and um, meaning how they talk to one another and he saw the differences and, and also the dialects and so forth but when he gets down to louisiana and so forth and he sees that wow there's racism and he sees it in the he knows that it's going on in schools and the year is 1960 it's an election year um kennedy and nixon are going at it and he doesn't talk too much about that he just says that there's election no one's really talking about it he says that people are seem to be a little disillusioned they, they need direction and there's no direction and it's funny because towards the end of his trip he gets lost in, in the state of new york and, he's, and I think he's alluding that, hey, you know, in this country, people are a little bit lost. People are a little um, disconnected um, and they need direction. And maybe this new president, whoever it is, will, will help them in that direction. But um, it was a great it was a, a great year to, for him to write it. He was really short. You know, he only had a few years left in his life. He gets the, um, as you shared, Ruben, the Nobel Peace, uh, not Peace, but Nobel Prize in Literature. In the same year this book comes out in 1962 and what a treat one of his last works uh, for us to, to be able to read a couple of last things i want to say um one is that uh there is a moment that uh that that was a good that was a good section you mentioned and the uh, there was also a really cool moment when he's driving through i believe yellowstone where the bears come out oh, yeah. and his dog is ready for the fight. And he tosses it in his, in his poodle. Uh, and the, it's not a small poodle, it's a big poodle. It's one of yeah, those different, um, but I know that for the, for the viewers who are watching. Um, and then uh, uh, the, it's a big, big poodle. And the other thing is that um, he mentioned something that happens over and over again and that you alluded to about him getting lost. He basically states, if you wish to meet a stranger, get lost or get a dog so that's a way you can talk to strangers a dog is a natural connector to people and getting lost people want to help you and people helped him they did it in their own way though when you when you he mentioned the different forms of communication depending on the regions of the country like in massachusetts yup is like talkative it's like man that's a talkative fellow he said yep to me whereas other places they talk more or they they were more friendly they had a different vibe like in ohio they had different ways of saying things a little bit more mm -hmm. uh i don't want to say friendly because they're they were friendly in Massachusetts in their way too, yeah they just had a different way of, of expressing themselves sure. so everybody should read it oh man yes thank you everybody uh for watching and um steinbeck week continues tomorrow bye-bye